Hi, I'm Anthony Martin from Emory University. I'm an ecnologist, someone who studies tracks, traces, burrows, nests, and all of this indirect evidence that animals have left. When I go along the Georgia coast on the Georgia Barrier Islands, I'm looking at modern analogs for what might preserve in the fossil record. What's great about traces is that they tell you about behavior, about how animals behaved in the past as well as how they're behaving today. So through connecting those modern analogs with the past, we're better, better able to interpret how behavior changed through time. Uh, one of my favorite studies recently I did was of these tracks from Australia, uh, fossil bird tracks, about 105 million years old. One of the tracks shows this beautiful claw mark from the foot as it came in for a landing. I see exactly the same kind of tracks on the Georgia coast from whenever a, a great egret or a great blue heron or some of these other large birds come in, flapping in, and making that kind of a landing. It was a perfect analog, having that modern track analog and then comparing it to what I saw in the fossil record, it was like seeing an old friend. How I got involved in it is my uh, friend and colleague David Vericchio at Montana State University asked me to come and look at the structure that was associated with the dinosaur that he and uh, Yoshi Katsura had found in Montana in Cretaceous rocks about 95 million years old. I went out there with him to investigate this mysterious structure and we concluded that it was a burrow. There was a sand filled tube that led down to a chamber that contained the skeleton of the dinosaur, Erictodromius cubicularis. We got to name it, that was a pretty cool thing. And it had two juveniles, partially grown juveniles in the burrow too. This was a great combination of trace fossil and body fossil evidence that along with the anatomical evidence on the uh, skeleton of the adult showed us that it was a digger, it was in its burrow, and it had juveniles in the burrow. That's like Christmas on a holiday on your birthday. It just doesn't get much better than that. I like to tell my students whenever we're in the field that they need to switch on their ichnovision. Ichnovision is where you have to start looking for traces and once you start seeing them, you realize they're everywhere. Developing these search images is something that vertebrate paleontologists often do with bone. For me, it's more about traces. What are some of these small jots and tittles that an animal might have left, as well as large tracks, burrows, or any other sign that they might have left for us to investigate? Paleontology allows me to be a kid every day that I get to go out and wonder and discover things that human eyes have never seen. I know that sounds a little cliche to other paleontologists, but that's the excitement I would like to express to everybody else, is that in paleontology, we're always uncovering how the past connects to today.